Welcome to Unit 2, Video 2, States of Matter. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the behavior of particles in matter. You should be able to describe the differences between solids, liquids, and gases. And you should be able to explain why substances expand when heating. So what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So you are matter, your iPad is matter, the air around you is matter. Pretty much anything you can think of in the universe is matter, as long as it has mass and occupies space. A couple important things about matter. Matter is made up of discrete particles. So what does this mean? Imagine a penny. It probably seems like that penny is just made of one solid, continuous piece of metal. But if we were able to zoom really, really far in on that penny, we'd actually see that the penny is made up of billions and billions of tiny little particles very close together. These particles are in constant motion. Finally, these particles are held together by attractive forces between them just like two opposite poles of a magnet attract one another. As you know, matter exists in three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. Let's take a look at a particle picture of solids and liquids and gases to see how the particles differ in each. Starting with a solid, you see that the particles are very, very close together. This means that there are strong attractive forces between the particles, holding them close to one another you can kind of think about them as being sticky or sticking together. The particles are also really well organized. They're very orderly. And they also are not able to move very much. Notice these particles are just vibrating in place. They're not moving around one another. Now let's look at a liquid. In the liquid phase, the particles are slightly more spread out and slightly less orderly than they were in the solid phase. Notice they're also able to move around each other a bit more than they were in the solid phase. They're not just vibrating in place. Also, because they're still pretty close to one another, we can say that they are, are pretty strong attractive forces holding them together. They're still sticking to one another pretty well, but not as much as they were in the solid phase. Finally, in the gas phase, we see that the particles aren't sticking together at all. There are hardly any attractive forces between them. We also see that the particles are moving all over the place. There's no limit to where they can move. And finally, this is really much less orderly than the solid or the liquid phase. So summarizing what we just saw, gases are the most, uh, have the most particle motion, whereas solids have the least particle motion. Gases are the least orderly, whereas solids are the most orderly. And gases have the weakest attractions, while solids have the strongest attractions. Due to this difference in particle behavior, there's some macroscopic differences in the phases of matter as well. Solids have definite shape and volume. Because the particles can only vibrate in place, Solids will not change shape or volume when they're put in different containers. Liquids, on the other hand, have an indefinite shape. It, they flow, yet they have a fixed volume. This is because the particles are able to move around one another, but they're still attracted to each other enough that they won't change their volume, only their shape, when they're put in a different container. And finally, gases will take up the entire shape and volume of their container. Because of the weak attraction between the gas particles, the particles move far away from each other. Therefore, they'll take up both the shape and the volume of their container. Looking again at our particle simulation of a solid, let's take a look at what happens as we increase the thermal energy of the solid. I'm going to add thermal energy by heating this solid. Notice, as I do this, the particles begin to move more quickly. They also begin to hit into each other more frequently and with more force. And finally, they begin to spread out a little bit more. So what can we say about the relationship then between matter and energy? 
Well, as thermal energy increases, as we just saw, the particles will collide more often and with greater force. This causes the particles to spread out or expand. This is called thermal expansion. Here's a diagram showing what happens to a liquid as the, as the thermal energy as is increased via heating. Notice in the diagram on the left, we have a lower temperature than in the diagram on the right. Notice also we have a smaller volume at a lower temperature. Here we have a higher, a larger volume at a higher temperature. As the thermal energy of the liquid increases, the particles hit into each other more frequently and with more force and begin to move away from one another, thereby increasing the volume. Thermal expansion is present in solids, liquids, and gases, and it's actually something you see in your everyday life all the time. Do you ever notice the expansion joints in a bridge or a road? Those are there because as the temperature outside changes, the road, the material that the road is made out of, will actually begin to expand and contract. The particles will move further away from each other on a hot day and will be closer together to one another on a cool day. If it weren't for those expansion joints, when the road begins to expand, it would actually crack or break rather than um, expand into the joint. Thermal expansion is present in liquids in thermometers. This is how a thermometer works. The developers of the thermometer related the expansion of mercury as it was heated to a temperature scale. And finally, thermal expansion in gases is responsible for a hot air balloon rising. As the air inside the balloon is heated, the particles move further away from one another. Therefore, they actually inflate the balloon and fill it with a less dense air than the air around it. As we know, things that are less dense float on things that are more dense. So the warmer air inside the balloon will be less dense than the cooler air outside the balloon allowing it to float. That brings us to the end of the States of Matter video. Let's review our goals. First, we describe the behavior of particles in matter. Matter is made up of discrete particles that are in constant motion and are attracted to each other. Then we described the differences between solids, liquids, and gases, both on a particle level and on a macroscopic level. And finally, we explained why substances expand when heated. As the thermal energy of the system increases, the particles collide with each other more frequently and therefore move further away from each other, causing the substance to expand.